impossible to avoid them. The air we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat, the clothes we wear, we ourselves are complex combinations of many different chemical substances. So uh, that being the case, uh, you know, you can't really avoid chemicals. Uh, well, so people learned a little more and they said, okay, it's only the man-made chemicals. Well, uh, if you examine the toxicity and uh, the uh, corrosiveness of different things, the man-made chemicals are just about the same percentage of dangerous as are nature's chemicals. Think of, think of things like uh, snake venom and uh, poison ivy fluid. So, okay, then it's only certain types of chemicals. Acids, uh, nothing good can come from an acid. Well, without as strong mineral acids, we wouldn't have things like paper or steel. And in fact, there are many, many acids in your home. You can't keep them out. Uh, you find them in things like uh, citric drinks, so orange juice, uh, uh, grapefruit juice. They contain citric acid. That's what gives them their sour taste. Oil and vinegar. The vinegar is acetic acid from as uh, apples. Many medicines are, as are acids. Acetosalicylic acid, for instance, is aspirin. Uh, and you know, that being the case, you know, the best way is to learn more about them and learn uh, which and which types have to be avoided. Well, in these beakers across the whiteboard are just little traces of slightly yellow or uh, cloudy white extracts from plants. Things coming from vegetables and flowers. It's their pigments. And about 50% of plant pigments have a property which we make use of in science in that they change color depending on whether they're exposed to an acid or a basic medium. Right now, they are slightly acid. I'm going to add a mild base. Oh, bases are something else to respect, but again, uh, your house has a cleaning closet full of them, things like ammonia cleaning solution, uh, detergents, and soaps and such. When we add them to these extracts, you see we produce all of the colors of the rainbow. And in fact, it is chemicals that produce all the colors by interacting with light, uh, white light. They absorb through electronic transition certain frequencies, and then the remainder uh, either transmits or reflects back to give us all these colors. Well, now it's slightly basic, and I'm going to use this to uh, show you something further concerning carbon dioxide. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of dry ice to each of these. You notice first the physical property that it's not very soluble in water, it comes bubbling out, but some of it does dissolve and it neutralizes the base, taking it back to the uh, yellow or clear solutions. Uh, you frequently deal with solutions of carbon dioxide. Uh, soda pop is a sweetened, flavored, water solution, which is bottled under one to three atmospheres of carbon dioxide pressure, pushing the gas in, and then when you open the can or bottle, it starts escaping and effervesces out. And uh, if you've ever tasted soda water, uh, you know it doesn't taste exactly like tap water. It has a sour taste, and that's due to that uh, small amount of carbon dioxide that dissolves in it, making a mild acid carbonic acid. In this cylinder, I've got a mixture of those various indicators, and we're going to add a little bit of dry ice, and watch as it goes through a series of colors, purple to blue to aqua to green to yellow, uh, slightly to the orange, would have to wait too long for it to get to the red. I'm going to add some more base, which will drive it back again to the purple, and now back through the blue and aqua and green, uh, yellow, and now do a phenomenon that's known as buffering. Uh, it won't make it back quite as far to the orange, and that's sort of fun, so let's do it one more time there through our rainbow of colors. So chemicals are all around us. They're responsible for uh, the color things are in addition to the aspects of uh, being very necessary in our uh, food and uh, other useful ways.
So uh, with that, I think Bruce.